Good morning, good morning, everybody. This Resurrection Sunday. It is Evangelist Calvina Banner here, live on Facebook through our Second Baptist Church page. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, our pastor is uh, Reverend Larry B. Tyler, our assistant pastor, Reverend Donnell Williamson. We are glad to have you here this morning, live. Hallelujah, having other methods, other means to be able to, to share the word of God, to be able to, to, uh, to worship <laughs> this morning. Hallelujah, for it is a good day today. So before I get started, I'm actually going to give some time for people to join. You know, even though we're, we're watching from home, you know how sometimes us folks is, we like to be late. <laughs> so I'm just going to give it a few minutes give people time enough to, to join in live with us. So I don't know if you can hear this worship song in the background, but it's Todd Delaney's The Anthem. And um, it says it all. It really says it all. Prayerfully, you can hear it. Hey, everybody, as you're coming on. Hey. Appreciate y'all. While you're logging in, go ahead and hit the share button or hit the, uh, the watch party button. Get it going. Let others know that Second Baptist is rocking out on Facebook Live this morning. I'm going to grab my water, so sit tight, y'all. Good morning, everybody. As you're logging in, we're just giving people time to to log in and find us here on the Second Baptist Facebook Live page. Good morning, Sister Kutsi. Happy Resurrection Day indeed. It is a good day, y'all. I hope y'all got some smiles on your face while you're sitting at your kitchen table, drinking your coffee, eating your breakfast, laying in your bed. Hallelujah. It's a good day. Oh, yes, Sister Norvell. He is risen. Hallelujah. Woo! I praise his name. Thank you, Lord. So good. So good. Good morning, Richard. Yes. Happy Resurrection Day to you, too. Glad to see you. Hallelujah, Shannon. Yes. Woo! Can't help but the... Hallelujah. For those who just logging in. Giving people a few minutes to, to log in here with us and join us this morning. While you're waiting, if you want to share this message through Facebook, let people know that it's going for. Start your watch parties to invite others. Hallelujah. morning. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Mrs. Cole. Hallelujah. 
Yes. We are the church. Hallelujah. We worship him in spirit and in truth no matter where we are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, amen, Brooklyn. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. Yes, sometimes you can only war cry unto him. Yes, God. Yes, happy Resurrection Day to you as well, Miss Brooklyn. Thank you. It's a good day. Happy to be here. Thank you, Lord. See you another day. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. He is worthy of all praise, all adoration, all honor, all glory. We thank him this morning for waking us up and allowing us the opportunity to say thank you, God, giving us the opportunity to, to join virtually and worship him in spirit and in truth on this day, this Resurrection Sunday. I don't know about y'all, but I'm real hype. <laughs> I am real hype on today because this is the day. This is what it's all about for us who follow God, who follows Christ. It is this day, the day that he got up. Hallelujah. I'm so glad about it. I'm so glad about it. Thank you everyone again for joining those who are still coming on, those who are sharing the message. Thank you very much. Those who are um, starting the watch parties. Thank you very much. Do all of that so that we all can, can sup this morning, this wonderful Resurrection Sunday morning. Again, let me introduce myself. My name is Evangelist Calvina Banner. I am an evangelist on staff at Second Baptist Church located in Joliet on 156 South Joliet Street. <laughs> Amen. Well, our pastor is Larry V. Tyler. Our, our assistant pastor is Reverend Donnell Williamson. So glad to be here. Glad to have you. And of course, once all the shelter in place and stuff is over, for those who are watching as visiting, as visitors, I do encourage you to, to visit us at the brick and mortar when all of this, um, uh, you know, transpires, go through, y'all know all that, because uh, God is able and he will. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Jesus will. Don't get me started. Hallelujah. You know, I'm missing my praise and worship, y'all. <laughs> Lead in praise and worship, right? So <clears throat> we invite you um, at any time to come visit us on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. But for now, praise God, this is where we are and this is where we will be. And, 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 and no four walls. No four walls will stop us from giving God glory. Is that right? No four walls will stop the word of God from going forth. Is that right? None. No walls. Hallelujah. Like I said, we are the church. Hallelujah. So now we have been dispatched. Yes, to go do some work outside of the four walls of, of any church that you may belong, any church you may visit. It is not about the building. We are the church. We are the church. Good morning, everybody. Again, good morning, everybody. Again, thanks for joining. Let's get started. Let's get started with the word. Excuse me, this morning, God is good. God is good. And as, as you probably saw the, the title of this message this morning to encourage us. We need encouragement. We need a word of hope. We need a message of hope at times, especially at times like this, but even when we're not uh, experiencing pandemics and, and shelters in place and having to wear a mask and all, we still need an encouraging word. We still need to be encouraged. We still need a message, a word of hope because that's who Jesus Christ is to us. He is our hope. So we need him when it boils down to it. Is that right? Is that right? So as you saw by the title of this message, hold your position. Good morning, everybody. As you're still coming on. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Hallelujah. Hold your position. 
Yes, I want us to meditate on that. Get that down in your spirit. Get that down in your shunda. Ha. Hold your position. Mm -hmm. So right along in the theme and the vein of our church theme for the year 2020, uh, our church theme this year is rejoicing in trials as overcomers in Christ. Yeah, for those of us who, who who attend Second Baptist regularly, you know that. You know that's what our our uh, our theme is. But for the visitors, let me read it again. Our theme for the year 2020, praise God. And I know the Lord gave this to, to our pastor because t tell me where we at now. We're not in a trial. All right. The theme is rejoicing in trials as overcomers in Christ. Rejoicing in trials as overcoming Christ. So this message, hold your position, hold your position. That's what this is about. Holding your position while we're rejoicing. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Y'all there? Y'all got me? Ida, you in the kitchen. Can you see me? Thank you. <laughs> I got members in the, in the house today. <laughs> All right. Thank God. Ooh, come on, Jesus. All right. So you know how you, mm -hmm, yeah, this is going to be a blessing upon the Lord. All right. Hold your position. Hashtag hold your position. So again, thinking about, thinking about the times that we're in now. And also, like I said before, even before all of this happened, we all experience some different things. We experience trials. We experience tribulations. We experience challenges. We experience our circumstances and they may come all upon us all at once. However, I want to encourage all of us to hold our positions. And the position that I'm referring to of holding is holding on to God, holding on to Christ, holding on to, to our all and all. We have to hold our position. We have to stand strong in the, in the power of his might. Is that not right? We have to stand strong in the power of his might. So I want to start with a scripture reading. If you got your Bibles in, uh, in front of you, or even if you don't, I'm going to read it in a high. All right. So we're going to be reading from Job. Chapter 1, verses 6 through 12. Give you a minute to get it in case you, you're, you're trying to get there. Again, it's Job chapter 1, verses 6 through 12. I don't know what I said the first time. I might have said that right, but uh, just in case. Job 1, verses 6 through 12. Let's get there. Let's get there. Praise the Lord for his holy word. Praise the Lord. So when I began to, to study and meditate on this word about holding our position, you know, I'm like, God, yeah, this is, this is good stuff because this is exactly what we need to do and where we are at, at this particular time in this season that we must hold our position. And um, the Lord brought it to my attention. A great example in scripture of someone holding their position in the midst of trial in the midst of situations, in the midst of circumstances, is our brother Job. Is our brother Job. He is a great example. Now, I want us to, to think about this because I believe sometimes when we read scripture, we think that these are just great stories. Oh, well, this is a good story. But this is real. <laughs> this happened to someone. This is a real thing. And so I want us to listen and read the word in the context of this happened. This is for real. So with that context in mind, let's get into the word. Again, Job 1 verses 6 through 12. My goodness, I got my contacts in and I still need some help. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <clears throat> All right, here, here it starts. One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. Thank you, Ms. Cole, for posting the scripture. Verse seven, the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Mm. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Who? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. 
Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? <clears throat> you have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and his herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch your hand out and strike everything he has and he will surely <laughs> curse you to your face. My Lord. In verse 12, the Lord said to Satan, very well, then everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Oh yes, God, my Lord, my Lord. So here we go. Here we have it. <clears throat> Satan doing what he do. You know what I mean? He, he wants to plan for attacks <laughs> upon the children of God. And, but God offered up Job. He said, look, have, have you considered the, him? He's pretty awesome. <laughs> he's a man of God. He, 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 uh, he, he's upright before me. And so God allowed Satan access to Job, but he also said, you can't touch him though. <laughs> you can touch the things around him, but you can't touch him. So I I'm encouraged by that piece. This ain't even where I'm going, but I'm encouraged by that piece in itself because as you can see, God, <laughs> he's in control. He's in control. God has his hands on each and every one of us, just in case you didn't know, just in case we forgot. God has his eye on us. If he's watching on a sparrow, not letting me, a sparrow can't fall without him knowing, don't you think he cares enough about us? He is watching. He is orchestrating this thing. Amen. So here it is. God gave Job that permission, or excuse me, God gave Satan that permission to access Job. Not the man himself, but his stuff and his things around him. So, my Lord, in the next few scriptures, my Lord, did he have his way? <laughs> Satan had his way in Job's situation. In a matter of minutes, I'm talking about minutes, y'all. <laughs> in a matter of minutes, Job lost it all. I want y'all to go and read that scripture, that, 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 uh, that chapter of scripture on your own. If you don't know the story already, but Job lost it all. I mean, he lost his oxen. He lost his donkeys. He lost his servants. He lost his sheep. He lost his camels, either, either by fire or by the enemy coming in and taking it and stealing it. He lost all of that. So those things, his, his donkeys, his, his servants, his, his camels, all of that, that's his livelihood. So in other words, that's likened to us losing all of our income all of our job, all of our provision, all the things that, that we would have that, to provide for our households. That's what Job lost in a matter of minutes. And when I say a matter of minutes, I mean a matter of minutes. A messenger came and delivered a message to Job one at, one at a time. One said, hey, you lost your camels by fire. And then while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, oh my goodness, look, I was the only one to escape. And, and, and now you lost your sheep. Now you don't lost your donkeys. The, 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 uh, the enemy came in and, and snatched them all away. While that one was delivering a message, another one came in and said something else was lost. My Lord, talk about a trial. Talk about a tribulation. Talk about a circumstance. <laughs> talk about something happening that's bad. Job had something happen that was Bad. And now if that was not enough, <laughs> he lost his livelihood, his stock, all that good stuff. He lost his 10 children. Oh God. Woo. That hurts my heart right there. My Lord, the man lost his children. Uh, like I said, in a matter of minutes, as they were delivering a message, someone else came and said, oh my goodness, Job, your kids, they was all together. 10 of them, seven sons and three daughters. They were in a house together. They were celebrating whatever they were doing. And a big mighty wind came and the house fell in on them all. And they all died. Oh, woo! hallelujah. My goodness. Come on now. Talk about a trial. Talk about a tribulation. The house done fell in on my children and done killed them all. Come on, God. Come on, God. So he didn't even have enough time to process the first losses. Before the second loss came, before the third loss came, the fourth, he didn't even have enough time to process the loss, the trial, the tribulation. He didn't have enough time. He didn't even do it. My Lord. But the trial kept coming. Now, <laughs> after all of that, if you were, were Job, <laughs> if I were Job, and, and even if we weren't, because we've all experienced some, some serious crises moments 
in our lives. I'm not trying to make nobody's situation seem worse than the other, but I'm just saying this situation here was pretty bad. So <laughs> even in our own lives, when we have crises moments, when we have these moments where it just it doesn't seem like it's just going to, it ain't going to get no better. It's always just going to keep getting worse. There's always something. Have you all, have you ca caught yourself saying that? Man, it's always something. It's always something. Have you caught yourself saying that anytime? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When you got these crises moments after crises moments and you feel helpless, you feel hopeless. What is our response? What's our response when we run into these crises situations, these crises moments? I'm going to tell you what it should be because our brother Job here, he was a great example. Even in the midst of all the foolishness that he was going through, he was a great example. Job, hallelujah. Job held his position. Job held his position. And in verses 20 through 21, it shows that he worshiped God. He worshiped. Y'all come on now. Come on. This Y'all got to catch this here. He worshiped God and he praised him. Nonetheless, even through all of the loss, all of the challenge, he worshiped. He praised God. He, he actually said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Woo! Come on now. Now, uh, truth be told now. When I've experienced some crisis moments and situations, I can't quite say that I said that. I got around to it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But our response should be that, God, you, you got this. You are in control. I relinquish it to you. You know the end from the beginning. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you. My Lord, I'm getting hot in here. I need a fan. My Lord, I'm going to praise you through it all. I'm going to praise you. This this, this is about the holding your position. You know, we walk around. We're Christians. Yep. We, I will trust in the Lord. You know, we sing that. We do it. But is it only when things are going well? Mm, come on now. Come on now. We have got to learn to trust in the Lord even when things aren't going so well. Although things aren't going according to our plan because we still can praise him because we know that it is well <laughs> with my soul because it's with him. Amen. Amen. So let us not forget that we have to praise him. And, and that's, that was the strength that Job had. How was he able? <laughs> How was he able to praise and worship at a time like that? That lost all his kids, that lost all of his, his, his income. How was he able? How was he able? Because he knew who God was to him. He knew who God was to him. And when we don't know who God uh, get unsure. We become unsure of, of what's going to come, what the outcome is be. Yeah, we may not know it, but we know the one who knows. So we can just trust and we can praise and we can worship. So he, Job, he knew who God was. He, he had some experience with the Lord prior to all of this happening. He knew who God was and, and his position was firm. His position was firm and not circumstantial. So that's what I want to encourage us all. Let our position that we are holding with the Lord, holding with God, not be circumstantial, not be circumstantial, but just firm in who he is, firm in who he is. Hallelujah. Let it be firm in who he is. Now, Job, now I said, now he done lost his kids. He done lost his income. My Lord, that wasn't it. <laughs> that wasn't it. So if we move to chapter two If we move to chapter two, verse seven. Same scenario, Satan goes before God again. God, like, where you come from? <laughs> Satan say the same thing. I'm just coming from the earth, going to and fro. So, you know, Satan is after us. He is just like looking proud. Who can I get to next? So we got to stay armored up, the whole armor of God, because <clears throat> he ain't sitting still. So neither should we. Anyhow, going to God, I'm just roaming the earth, going to and fro. And, uh, you know, he's like, all right, okay, Job, all right, he didn't curse you to your face because, you know, you took his stuff, but I bet he'll curse you to your face <laughs> if you let me harm his body. I bet he will. <laughs> this is what Satan is presenting to God. 
So in verse seven, uh, chapter two, verse seven of Job, and God said, all right, go ahead. But you can't kill him now. <laughs> Again, God, God got it all. He's working it all. So in verse seven, Satan went out from the presence of God after he got that permission and he afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet woo, to the crown of his head. Then Job, mm, 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 mm. verse eight, then Job took a piece of broken pottery, like a piece of a broken vase and, and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. Woo, Job was in, in, in a bad state right there. Verse nine, his wife said to him, are you still maintaining your integrity? <laughs> Curse God and die. He replied in verse 10, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Come on, y'all. Seriously, Job, he stood his ground. He held his position with God. No matter what came, no matter what went, he held his position with God. And so much so that his wife even had to question him. Now, now he done lost his health. Now, the, the scripture in the NIV version says sores. But we can imagine that these things were just boils. Just nasty, painful. Ugh. If anybody's ever had a boil anywhere, you know that stuff, it, it don't tickle. And then so much so, he in so much pain to relieve some of that pain. He, he taking a piece of broken pottery and scraping himself. Just, ugh, Jesus, in the ashes. <laughs> While he's in the ashes. He was in a bad state, y'all. He was in a bad state of mind, I'm sure, and in a physical sense. But his spirit, <laughs> his spirit held position. His spirit held position, even in the midst of that. And in verse 9, his wife, what? You still maintaining your integrity? You done lost, we done lost our kids. We ain't got no income. You look in a hot mess. You need to go on somewhere and curse God and die. <laughs> That's what his wife told him. So not only is he losing all these things, even his wife, he's losing her because she done lost her mind. You know, I ain't saying nothing wrong. I mean, she should be hurting at this time. She, she's experiencing this stuff too. However, <laughs> he said, Psh, should we not just accept? Should we just accept good? That's it. That's all we, that's all we do. We accept good from God. But when things go wrong, we, 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 we want to turn. He said that. And, and I love the word here in verse nine, where he said, are you still maintaining? That's proof that Job continued to hold his position. He held his position. His wife questioned him about it. How can you still hold your position? Maintaining, meaning staying there, remaining there, holding your position. How can you, you still doing that? Job said, uh-huh. Yeah. I do, while I'm still scraping. Whew. Yes, while I'm still scraping. Why? Again, because he knows who God is in his life. <laughs> he knows. He has experience with God. God has made ways out of no way before for him. God, he knows that God provided all of the things that he had. He knows that. He said, he said it in the, in the, in the first chapter. <laughs> That, that God giveth and he taketh away. It's, it's, it's all in God's hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask us today. Hallelujah. I want to ask us today. Who has God been to us? So when we run up on trials or when trials run up on us, y'all. And like I said in the start, are we not in one now? Collectively? As a world? My Lord. How, God is the bomb. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, um, it's a challenging time right now, but I know that God is still on the throne and he got the whole world's attention right now. You see what I'm saying? That's what I mean that God is awesome. He has the whole world's attention right now. Now, again, back to who has God been to you when we run up on trials like this, pandemics, staying in the house, losing income. You know what I mean? Can't see your family like you want to. Can't, can't. How do we? Ooh, how, how, how do we, how do we navigate that? Because we got to draw on who God has been to us. We have got to draw on that. So let me ask you, who has God been to you? Who has God been to you throughout your life? Who has he been to you? Has he been your rock? Has he been your rock? Your firm foundation. 
Woo! Sister Valor, you just commented right there. And I sure thought, think about you singing that song. Lead me to the rock. Glory to God. Lead me to the rock. He is my firm foundation, my salvation, my solid rock. He has. Oh, come on, God. Come on, Holy Spirit. He has been my rock. Scripture tells us in Isaiah 26 and 4, he says, trust in the Lord forever for the Lord. The Lord himself is your rock eternal. Your rock eternal. Woo, thank you, God. I can go to the rock whenever, <laughs> whenever and however I can go to the rock. Has he been your refuge? Come on, y'all. Sometimes we got to be reminded in a way so that we can hold our position when we think about the good things God has done for us, who he has been to us. Hallelujah. In the midst, hallelujah, has he been your refuge? Is he someone you can run to? Anytime I have an issue, anytime I have a problem, I can run to my refuge. Has he been your prince of peace? Oh, yes. In moments when I thought I was going to lose my whole mind, Oh, yeah. So long as I keep my mind stayed on him. Hallelujah. He has been my perfect peace. Has he been your salvation? Oh, yes. He's been my salvation. We are in right standing and right relationship with him as followers of Christ. So no matter what the uh, what this age is doing, what's going on in this season, I know we know. <laughs> that we are in right relationship with him. So no matter what come and what, no matter what may go, in the end, I am with him. Hallelujah. I am with him. Has he been your provider? Has he been your provider? Has he supplied all of your needs according to his riches and glory? Hallelujah. I think he has. I think he has. I think he has. Has he been your keeper? He's kept me from harm. He's kept me from danger. Are you still here today? Are you able to watch this? Are you able to hear this? Are you able to read the word? He, hallelujah. He, hallelujah, has been our keeper. Has he been our way maker? Our miracle way, or our miracle worker. When things seemed impossible. Woo! All things have been possible with him. He has made ways out of no ways. Ways that we thought <laughs> could not be worked out. He has done it. Has he been your promise keeper on today? He's been my promise keeper on today. His word tells us in Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. His word doesn't come back void. His word accomplishes what it was sent forth to to do. He is a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. He is our buckler, y'all. That means he's our shield. He's our shield. He protects us. He hides us under his feathers according to Psalm 91 and 4. And under his wings, we shall trust. His trust shall be our shield and our buckler. He keeps us in a constant protection, whether we know it or not, whether we see it or not, whether we feel it or not. He is our buckler. Has he not been your guide? Hallelujah. Has your steps not been ordered? Has it been something that you're like, man, if I would have went that way, something really bad could have happened to me. That is because God has been our guide along the way. He is the order of our steps. Has he been our truth? Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Hallelujah. Has been the truth guiding us into all truth. Hallelujah. Has he not been the lover of your very soul? God cares about you. God cares about me. He loves us to the very core. So much so. If you read John 3 and 16 where he says that he so loved the world that he gave. Hallelujah. His only begotten son. That all we got to do is believe on him and we shall not perish, hallelujah, but have everlasting life. He loves us, y'all. He loves us. Has he been our hope all the time? I'm telling you, without the hope of God, where would we be? Where would we be? He always gives us something to look forward to. He tells us to meditate on things that are good, things that are positive, things that are praiseworthy. He wants us to meditate on those things to keep us having a hope in him. Has he not been your rescue? 
Oh God, he's been my rescue. It says in Psalm 91 and 14 again, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will rescue him. So in a moment of your darkness, in the moment of being in your pit, God is there. He will rescue you. Read Psalm 91 and 4. He will rescue you. Has he not been our omega? Oh God, he knows the end. He was there in the beginning. He's here now and he knows the end. Scripture tells us it's Jeremiah 29 and 11. He knows the plans that he has for you. So although you may not know them to the ends and to the outs, God knows the plans that he has for you. So hold on to God. Hold on to the plans that he has for you. Trust that they are good because that's what the word says. It's a plan to give us a hope and a future. I thank God for the hope and the future. I thank God for Romans 8. 28 where he tells us as well all things I'm talking about the good the bad the ugly and different anything that you think all things work together oh God he's stirring it up hallelujah he's putting it together in the pot to make it a good thing all things work together for the good hallelujah to all of us who love him and who are called according to his purpose has he not blessed us y'all he's been the blesser all the time, hallelujah, because his word tells us that he will not withhold any good thing from us. So he has been there. He has blessed us. He has kept us. Like I said, hallelujah, has he not been faithful? I talked about already. His, his word doesn't come back to us void. Hallelujah. His promises are yea and amen. He has been our strength. Even in the times of our weakness, y'all, I know, I know that I know that I know that it's nothing but the strength of God, the power of his might that has kept me going, kept me stepping forth. When we wanted to give up, when we wanted to throw in the towel, it is his strength. Has he not been sovereign talking about that? God got his hands on us. He's always around. Has he not been merciful to us? He lovingly withholds things that we rightfully deserve. He is merciful. I thank you, God. He's great. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent, omniscient. He is all of those things for us. Is he not forgiving? Hallelujah. So many mistakes I've made, so many things that I've done against his word, so many things that I've neglected to, to do. God is able to forgive. He's been our forgiver over and over and over. He's consistent with us, y'all. He never changes. Hallelujah. He never changes. He's victorious. Has he not been victorious in your life? We've won some battles because we're on the side of God. We've won some victories because we're on the side of God. He's been our protector. I talked about that. He's been our healer. Psalm 147 and 3 says he heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. Oh God, so our internal, our spiritual, our emotional, our physical, God is there to heal. He is there to heal. He's been our defender. He's, he's compassionate with us. I love that. He is compassionate with us. His word tells us. He tells us here, cast our cares on him because he cares for us. He wants us to come to him. He is compassionate, y'all. He loves us. He wants us to cast our cares on him. The things that, he, that we care about, he cares about. Woo! That was a short list. Huh? Because there's so much more God has been to us. But all in all, he has been good. Hallelujah. Ha! Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's a good place to worship. He has been good. He is still good. He is still good, y'all. And because... He is good. Like I said, that John 3, 16, he gave, woo, gave freely. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to do anything because while we were, who glory to God, while we were yet sinners, he gave his son. He gave his son. He gave his son. And that's what today is about. He gave his son. And who is his son, y'all? Come on, Jesus. Come on, put that in the comments. We need to flood the comments with Jesus. Oh, come on, Jesus. He gave his son, Jesus. He gave his son, Jesus, who is the ultimate example for holding his position. Oh God, when we want to find somebody that held his position, we need to look at Jesus because Jesus held his position. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you that 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 God, Jesus held his position because when he knew what was to come, whoo, glory to God, when he knew what was coming for him, 
when he knew what was coming for him. In Matthew 26, he went and prayed his face down to the ground. Oh God, oh God, his face down to the ground. He prayed to the father. He said, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. I'm so glad. I'm so glad he held his position. He didn't get weak. He asked God. He did lament to God. If, it, if, if you can, God, please take this cup from me. But not as I will, but as you will. So he held his position. Jesus held his position when he was betrayed and when he was arrested, he was betrayed by his beloved disciple. When Judas walked up to him and kissed him on a cheek, giving him a sign of affection, but knowing he was betraying him, Jesus already knew, but he held his position. He didn't run away. He didn't walk away. He held his position. Jesus continued to hold his position in Matthew 26, where when they falsely accused him, when he falsely accused him, he remembered remained silent. He didn't say a mumbling word when they were throwing all these accusations at him. You know how we get sometimes if somebody say something wrong about us, we want to defend ourselves. No, God, Jesus, he held his position when they spat in his face and when they struck him with his fist, when they slapped him, when they flogged him, Jesus held his position. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. He held his position. He didn't move from there either. He continued to hold his position. When Pilate asked the crowd, what shall we do with this man that he's calling himself the Messiah? What shall we do? And they all yelled, crucify him. They all yelled, crucify him. Jesus, he held his position. I thank you, God. He knew what his will had to be. He knew what the end was going to be. So he held his position. I thank you that he held his position. Hallelujah. Oh, God. And it didn't stop there. He continued to hold his position in Matthew 27 when they stripped him of his garments. They stripped him of his garments. They began to twine that, that thorny, th thorny branches together to create this crown of thorns. And they, and they put it on his head. And oh God, you can only imagine how painful that was. But he held his position. Uh, they put a staff in Jesus' hand. And then they began to kneel in front of Jesus and mock him and just say, hail king of the Jews, they said. And they continually beat him. And they continually just, just, just thank you. They just continually uh, beat him and flogged him and just made fun of him, mocked him. Hallelujah. But he held his position. I thank you, Jesus. He held his position when he was nailed to the cross that they made him carry up Golgotha's hill. He held his position. Thank you, Lord. He held his position when he said, Whoo, he's up on the cross. He said, It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. He held his position and he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad Jesus held his position. He held his position. He was hanging there and the soldier came and pierced him in his side and the blood and the water came flowing out. Thank you, Jesus. He held his position. He held his position. I'm so glad about it. I'm so glad about it. He held his position when they placed him in the tomb. Oh, God. Ah, come on, y'all. It's celebration time. He held his position when they placed him in the tomb. And the big stone that they rolled over the entrance, entrance he, 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 he held his position. But this is my favorite part. Hallelujah. He held his position when he rose. He held his position when he rose. If you look, if you look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 2 through 7, it says there was a violent earthquake. 
for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Oh yes, God. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, don't be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. He invited them. He said, come, come and see where he lay. Then quickly go and tell the disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you in Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because he is risen and has that he has held his position that we have the power and the authority to do the same. I thank you, Jesus, for holding your position. It's a time to praise. Hallelujah. This is the day that he's made. Hallelujah. He got up with all power in his hands. All power is in his hands. And because he has all power, we are connected to him. And we have that very same power to overcome no matter what comes, no matter what goes. Hold our positions, children of God. Know who God is. He is the same God that he was when he raised Jesus over 2,000 uh, 2, years ago. He is the same God, that resurrection power that, that he had then is living and alive in us. So let us go forth, hallelujah, knowing, hallelujah, that we can do it, knowing that we can overcome, we can hold our position. We can rejoice in the trials as we overcome them because he is a good God. He is a powerful God. He is a mighty God. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. I hope you can hear that song because we do have the victory in him. Hallelujah. Give him some praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. No failure in God. He can never lose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. We got the victory in him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Devil is defeated. God be praised. Every situation we face, we win. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hold your positions. Come on, y'all. Don't stop praising them. I know we got a praise party going on in each and every household today. Hallelujah. He's so good. Hallelujah. Hold. Hold our position. Woo! Now it's time to celebrate all oh, banners raised. I got the victory, y'all. We got the victory. The devil is defeated. Yes. Every situation I face, I win. Thank you, Jesus. It's because of him that we win. Everything works for the good in the end. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless his name this morning. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hold your position, y'all. Hold your position. Hold your position. Don't let the enemy overly discourage us. I know there's moments when we're discouraged, when we may have fear, when we may not know, but we know the one who knows. <laughs> we know the one who knows. So hold your position. Hold your position. And if there's anybody watching right now who may not know Jesus <laughs> as your Lord and personal Savior, you may not know him as your Lord and personal Savior. Today is the day. It is Resurrection Sunday. He got up for you. He got up for me even before we, we, we accepted him. <laughs> he had already accepted us, accepted us. He did that already. And it's so easy to, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. Romans 10, nine says it very plainly. It, it, it's not a big production. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior on today, you can do it on today, right now, right where you are. You don't have to be in the church house, the building. You can do it right now where you are. Hmm. Scripture tells us, Romans 10, 9. 
If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Period. <laughs> Period. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do is believe those things and confess it with your mouth. So again, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. You will be saved. So take the time. Hallelujah. You, you just, you admit that you're a sinner. God, I admit that I'm a sinner, but I believe, oh God, what the scripture tells me. I believe that Jesus is Lord and that you raised him from the dead, oh God, and I am saved. And you just commit your life to him. God, I commit my life to you right now. Going forward, my life is for you and you're saved. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So for anyone that has accepted Jesus on today, I, 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 I commend you and I, I encourage you as well. Reach out. You know, if you don't have a church home, if you have questions, um, reach out, send us a message here on this, on this Facebook page and our, in our mailbox, we will make sure we connect with you. Amen. Um, but I, I just want us to all be in the arc of safety so that we know, so that we know we can hold our position because we are in safety in God's arms, in God's arms. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Resurrection Sunday once again. I pray that this message has been an encouragement and a blessing. Please feel free to start watch parties. Feel, please feel free to um, share the message with family and friends. Uh, and enemies for that matter. We all need the God. We all need the Lord. <laughs> so I pray that this message was a blessing. I love you all. Enjoy this resurrection day. Hold your position because he got up on today. Amen. God bless you all. Oh, signing off. Evangelist Calvina Banner with Second Baptist Church Facebook page. Again, where our pastor is Larry Tyler and our assistant pastor is Reverend Donnell Williamson. Take care, guys. Love you.